Hello internet. Sometimes as hyper productive individuals living in this chaotic digital world, we get the routine urge of self improvement and self help. It is something everybody seems to have an opinion about and yet they don't seem to be in much agreement with each other. <laughs> So as a person who always identified as a male and occasionally wants to improve himself it becomes a bit confusing as to who my online mentor should be it takes very little time for this confusion to become a bit overwhelming so in order to deal with this i often just sit back relax and see if there's something new john wilson has come up with hey new york The other day as I was watching the new season of How to with John Wilson I thought about the previous video essay I'd made on John Wilson showing us how to become ourselves I did make some amazing connections between Carl Jung's individuation process and John Wilson's method but something was missing in my essay I tried extremely hard to present it as a profound truth about John and maybe I lost a bit of the plot in all that self seriousness so as i sat there watching season 3 playing in front of me i suddenly realized what my previous essay was missing coolness and even though i'd initially sat there watching the show just for chilling out a rather uncomfortable truth my sheer lack of a sense of humor now lay staring at me in the form of a laughing buddha i came to realize that it's time for an essay that John Wilson needs to be looked from another perspective this time so sit back on your comfortable sofas and join me as i try to figure out how to be cool in life on my internet quest to seek guidance about being cool i had to make sure i avoided clickbait or any other source of info that seemed fishy so i naturally went to google and opened Wiki how for a credible source I found some points that clearly fit John the most Despite his obsession with carrying a camera everywhere John hasn't been afraid of being outcast because of it To the common man John is an alienating sight and this approach shouldn't work for someone who wants people to open up to him Yet it does mostly because John has employed other methods to help him in coming across as cool to us one of the obvious methods he implements is using humor john wilson is good at this through his reactions to different kinds of people wow look at that and i don't know but just when i said that right now i felt oh wonder something's happening and that's one thing we can do during bird walks is if we don't happen to see much just go ahead and go wow anyway and train yourself to be amazed at what's here right now wow A more sneaky way his humor creeps into the episodes is how he trivializes his own topics. We often look up to people on media by their consistency, discipline, command over a certain topic. But what happens when we come to a point where such things look as artificial as they are inauthentic? John Wilson to avoid this simply lets go of his command. This makes him easily flexible with his approach. And just when you thought you had run out of things to impress the television academy with, these people had just given you the perfect metaphor. Because he's open to doing anything, he can switch swiftly from finding washrooms to talking to a paranoid guy who's built an underground home when things don't go as expected. And then as a callback joke. So this is the bathroom Congress would have used? Yes. <laughs> He tries to force his topic into this newly evolved conversation. His incredible ability to impulsively find a new way leads John to another important quality in his personality, being relaxed. John isn't tied to any boss in general. In season 3, he makes this clear when he seems to bring up tension with HBO on their own show. John isn't particularly interested in posing as a devotee of HBO. Are you actually from HBO? Yeah, yeah. No, you're not. No, you can Google me. No, you're not from HBO. I am. He does use the HBO card sometimes to get people to open up, and so 
John takes it easy with his straightforward approach to difficult and unsettling situations. In season 3 episode 2, How to Clean Your Ears, John's approach hits a new peak after getting his ears cleaned off. He gets the opportunity to let his recorder loose and simply listen to other people and their noisy life. Eventually, John instinctively takes a retreat from noisy New York and explores a place with electrosensitive people inhabiting it. To his surprise, he discovers some politics happening in the region. For a documentarian who got his ears cleaned, listening to both sides of the conflict comes to him effortlessly. And John's experience comes to an interesting conclusion. So, maybe you should try getting used to the stuff that bothers you. Otherwise, you may just be on the run forever. A mature acceptance of his fate that only seems to make him a cooler documentarian to watch. But what if I tell you John Wilson also gives no shits about documentaries? In episode 5 of season 3, John Wilson goes from bird watching to being attracted towards the Titanic conspiracy theories and he suddenly cuts to an ironic gag he pulls off by applying the documentary approach. Documentaries are a medium where filmmakers pose to be truth seekers to find their side of the story whether it be pertaining to a left wing or a right wing stance. Friedrich Nietzsche in his book Beyond Good and Evil warns us about philosophers who claim to seek the truth remarking that the same people try to find a more self-serving version of their reality just an appropriation of their personal beliefs as he clarifies such men say they want to hear the truth but they use blunt tools to reach it putting up a serious self-important face john on the other hand wants his own layer of truth seeking to break down Did you ever betray someone you love? No. That's a lie. While being a documentarian, he wants to warn you about gatekeepers in media. He's willing to risk his own reputation to tell you, the viewer, that he for one isn't going to fool you into his side of the truth. And at one point you noticed that there was a white van that was parked outside of your apartment that was there for a few days. He eventually pulls your attention to a grand conspiracy playing against him. He makes you wonder if he's in danger for pursuing the truth behind the conspiracy. Fuck. And then he shocks you into thinking a true crime has just unfolded. But just at that moment, he refuses to pull back the curtains. So, the next time something seems too good to be true, just enjoy that you live in a world where something like that is possible. By revealing what news media, conspiracy theories, reporters, documentarians conceal behind these curtains, John Wilson teaches us that being cool doesn't necessarily mean that you can't blow your own cars. or minds this is suave and for more such interesting essays do consider hitting subscribe